Hey everybody, it's time to take a look at the Dark Crisis Green Lantern one-shot. While this is a Dark Crisis tie-in, it's completely self-contained, and you can read this issue without having to worry about any spoilers for Dark Crisis, and in fact, you don't actually have to know what Dark Crisis even is. So let's jump in! Dark Crisis, Worlds Without a Justice League, Green Lantern Number 1. Written by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Fernando Blanco, colors by Jordi Belair, and letters by Troy Petteri. So the basic premise is that when the Justice League supposedly died, each member was actually sealed inside of their own custom fantasy world, designed to give each of them their ideal happy lives while unknowingly becoming a resource to be used by the main villain of Dark Crisis. In the case of Jon Stewart, we see him living a peaceful, quiet life on a farm with his mother and younger sister, while the planet is defended by a Green Lantern Corps consisting of a few Earthlings like Kyle Rayner, Natasha Irons, and Jason Todd, plus a large handful of classic alien Green Lanterns. John only has to come out of retirement to get involved when the situation becomes really dire, like when an army of demonic Thanagarians show up pulling some kind of large evil space baby, and it wipes out half of the core. But as soon as John shows up, he defeats the bad guys effortlessly. And that says a lot about what his version of a perfect world is. There was a scene in Green Lantern Mosaic, issue 12, where John was reading some Silver Age Green Lantern comics starring Hal Jordan, and he loved it, because it presented a more carefree version of what it means to be a superhero. A Green Lantern who didn't have to worry about any tough issues, who could just swoop in and save the day and then go home where everything is happy and simple. So if what we see in this one-shot is supposed to represent John's idea of a perfect life, then I'd say they pretty much got it right. Although there were some big flaws that jumped out at me. There was no mention of either Fatality or Katma in this world, and while they did bring back his little sister, they got her name wrong. This issue calls her Eleanor, when her name was actually Rose. On top of that, the enemies they fight in this issue felt like wasted potential. If this world is supposed to represent John's fantasy of a perfect life, then the evil force coming to take it away shouldn't be some generic, vaguely human-shaped creatures. They should be representative of John's fears and failures. They could even be representative of reality, of the real DC Universe encroaching on this perfect world, making the entire battle into an introspective look at John fighting to remain happy. Part of me wishes this issue could have existed completely separate from Dark Crisis, because most of my dissatisfaction is the result of it being part of a larger event. What we have here is a totally standalone Elseworlds story, focused on the mythology and world building of this alternate reality. And on that level, it's perfectly fine, but the timing of its release gave me different expectations, which affected my ability to enjoy the issue. In Dark Crisis number 3, Hal Jordan fell into this world, and was confronted by some of these characters. This one-shot came out the very next week, so I was expecting a continuation of that story. And when I saw the demonic Thanagarians pulling the big evil space baby, it made me think that the story might have something to do with the Hawkgirl backup that's also in this issue. So when neither of those ended up being true, and all I was left with was a perfectly fine self-contained Elseworlds one-shot, I felt disappointed. And I realize that isn't fair. I think I'm just growing impatient waiting for the story of Dark Crisis to really get going, and taking time out to explore a world that we'll probably never see again feels like a bad idea when not much has actually happened in this event yet. And just to finish us off, there's a Hawkgirl story written by Jeremy Adams, with art by Jack Herbert, colors by Alex Gumaris, and letters by Troy Petri. Kendra Saunders is raiding a tomb in order to find an ancient elixir that would take away her ability to reincarnate. Living through hundreds of different lives and retaining full memory of all of them has left Kendra feeling stagnant. No matter what she does, it's something she's done before in another life. Her eternal existence has come to be defined by dull repetition, and no matter what she tries, she can't come up with something that's truly a new experience. She was just going through the motions, life after life, hoping for variety that would never come. So she finds the elixir, drinks it, and suddenly all the memories of her past lives are gone, and presumably her cycle of reincarnation has been broken. For the first time in forever, Kendra doesn't have an eternal past, or an endless future. All she has is the present, 
one life that could end at any time, a handful of years that she could spend doing anything she wants, and she's never felt more alive. <laughs> if it wasn't clear, I liked this Hawk Girl backup way more than the Green Lantern story. I wish this backup story was a miniseries. This version of Kendra looks great, and her existential crisis is super interesting, and I hate the fact that this version of the character and the world likely won't continue once Dark Crisis is over. So that's it for this Green Lantern one-shot, but we're not done, because it was just announced that another one is coming in November. Jon Stewart, The Emerald Knight Number 1 is a 48-page one-shot written by Jeffrey Thorne with art by Marco Santucci, and will pick up where Green Lantern Number 12 left off. It's important to recognize that we don't yet know the purpose of this one-shot. Is it one final double-sized issue to end Thorne's run? Is it here to explain the continuity gap between Green Lantern number 12 and the death of the Justice League? Will it lay the groundwork for whatever's going to happen with Green Lantern after Dark Crisis is over? The synopsis makes it sound like this could be the final confrontation with Isak, as well as an escape from the Dark Sector. But there are a lot of different paths the franchise could go down based on all of that, so we'll just have to wait and see. In the meantime, I want to know your thoughts on the exhaustingly named Dark Crisis Worlds Without a Justice League Green Lantern Number 1. And while you're at it, tell me your favorite Elseworlds story. It doesn't have to be about Green Lantern. I'll also accept a Marvel What If, so tell me all about it in the comment section down below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, so we can keep speculating about the future of Green Lantern together. The script for this video can be found at mosaiccomics.blogspot.com, and you can find me talking about all sorts of comic goodness on Twitter at Mosaic Comics, links in the description. Everybody, thank you for taking the time to watch. My name is Dan, we'll talk again soon.